trains are running again on the section of India's rail network that was the scene of Friday's devastating crash. More than 50 hours on, goods trains are able to move in both directions on tracks in a dishes state after the removal of carriages badly damaged in the three-way collision. 275 people have died and dozens of the victims are yet to be identified. Archana Shukla has been at the scene of the crash. Just as a kiss. A paycheck he hesitates to collect. Gautam Das was meant to be on the same ill-fated train as his wife, but stayed back to run a last-minute errand. My wife's image keeps flashing before my eyes. What am I to do that my wife is gone? Money can be earned later, but nothing can bring her back, Gautam tells me. Family members have been gathering at the centre after the government announced compensation of a thousand pounds for the kin of the deceased. For others, the painful search is still on. Sifting through photos, from hospital to hospital, and now morgue to morgue. Inconsolable and traumatized. Hello, hello. 22 year old Himanshu can barely speak. His brother was on the train that crashed. Can I see my brother? Just once. He keeps repeating. At this makeshift morgue, he's just one of many who don't have answers yet. Ten members of Mukul Singh's family were on the train. Eight found, one dead and one still missing. His family spent 450 pounds, much beyond their means, to come here from another state. These photos are unrecognizable. How can we find him in this? I had never thought this would happen. Just a day before, we had so much fun, he tells me. With limited resources to manage the dead, government has now shifted all the casualties to the capital city five hours away from here. But over 180 bodies still remain unidentified. Officials have started posting the photos of dead bodies on government websites and have said they'll start resorting to DNA identification. These tracks that tell the story of loss are still being cleared. Rail service has been restored on some tracks. Attention has now turned to just why this disaster happened. Achna Shukla, BBC News, Balasore, Odisha. We can go live now to Archana Shukla, who is in uh, the East Indian state of Odisha. And extraordinary that, that the trains are, are running again in that area where the, the crash was such a huge crash, wasn't it? So many carriages involved in such a, a huge area affected. And of course, so many people have lost their lives. Yes, absolutely. It was uh, after 50 hours of restoration work, clearing of the wreckage, removal of all the uh, overturned coaches from the railway tracks, inspections uh, to see that if the signals along the line were working, that train services have resumed. Uh, both goods and passenger trains are now running. We are standing along the line, one of the stations closer to where the accident happened and trains just a few minutes ago, one of the passenger trains uh, passed by uh, one of the first very first times uh, uh, since the train accident happened but uh, train services have not come up fully 100% it's still reduced services uh, with fewer trains moving right now uh, on the tracks some of the clearances and wreckage uh, still need to be moved uh, out of the way to get all the lines back up on track but certainly it was a massive clearing and the questions on what really caused uh, uh, the the disaster of the scale in India uh, you know the the, the deadliest India has seen in many decades, uh, so to say. Uh, preliminary investigations have said that it was a fault of the electronic signaling system. Uh, while two separate railway inquiries are ongoing, uh, the railway ministry has also recommended that country's uh, top investigative agency, the Central Bureau of Investigation, uh, also uh, probes 
the cause uh, of this. It's still unclear why, uh, you know, the country's top criminal investigative agency is being asked to be roped in for this investigation when railways, uh, uh, you know, railway inquiries are already on. But there is certainly a lot of pressure on the government, on ra senior railway officials and the railway minister uh, to resign, taking accountability uh, on why such an accident of this nature uh, occurred when the government has been spending money on railway infrastructure for the last many years. And there's so many distressing images in your piece that we just played just now of, of people who, who don't know about whether their loved ones uh, survived or not. It's taking a long time to identify the victims, isn't it? It is, and one of the bigger reasons is because the train services on this route were disrupted for three days, many families of passengers uh, who were the affected train could not make it to the accident site. They are only coming in from yesterday, uh, and even today some families are coming in via uh, you know, road, uh, road routes um, and reaching the accident spot, and that's the reason, one of the reasons why claiming of the bodies and identification uh, has also uh, taken a longer time. Secondly, yesterday where, uh, at the uh, hospital where we were in Balasore, close to the accident site, all the casualties were being moved to Bhuvneshwar, the capital city, a five-hour drive where there are better uh, morgue facilities uh, to, store, uh, to, to take and manage the dead. Um, and that was creating also a lot of chaos and adding to the ordeal of family members who were reaching one place and then were being sent to another to look for their loved ones. So uh, the management of this has also, uh, you know, not been up to uh, as what uh, most family members would have wanted. Um, uh, and, and that's the reason why it's taking a longer time for identification as well. Okay, thank you so much. Archana Shukla there reporting for us.